When the smart car first arrived in Canada in 2004, it created a buzz simply because of its size or lack of. And it was a Mercedes-Benz, how could it go wrong? Well, it did, and Motoring TV was not alone in complaining about possibly one of the worst automatic transmissions we had ever driven. I mean, you needed a neck brace to avoid whiplash as it grunted through the gears. Well, Mercedes has selected Portland, Oregon to launch the brand new 2016 Ford 2. Why Portland? Well, apparently this is considered one of the, quote, greenest cities in the world. So let's take some time, check out the new vehicle, and also find out if Mercedes has hopefully thrown that old transmission off one of the many bridges here in Oregon. Well, you said, I mean, powertrain, we listen to our customers and we, you know, we listen to feedback. This is the third generation of smart. So we want to learn from, you know, our experience with, with the past generation. So now uh, we have a completely new engine, 900 cc, three cylinder turbo engine. It's good for 89 horsepower, but more importantly, 100 pounds feet of torque. So that's what's going to get you off the line in a hurry. went away from the single transmission model now so we have a five-speed traditional manual transmission with the clutch and a shifter for those uh, that want it and then we also have the optional transmission which is a six-speed twin dynamic dual clutch transmission so similar in setup to what uh, on the Mercedes-Benz side you would see in something like the B-Class and the CLA uh, so it, you know a, a genuine dual clutch automated transmission unit. As I mentioned, Portland is a pretty hip and green city. They've got lots of places to plug in your electric vehicles many bike lanes, many of them down the center of the street, ouch. And for Mercedes, it's a big center for the car sharing company called car to go In Canada, we have things like Zipcar and Auto Share. But how big of a deal are these car sharing programs to the smart brand? Well, think about it. When was the last time you saw a smart car without a logo? Yeah, we wanted to make the car give it a more mature look. We've proven the concept now. We don't need to be the, the, the cheapest car in the market. Um, and, you know, we wanted to also give customers a new design. So the exterior is completely different than we've seen in, in any of the uh, previous generations of the Smart. And the track is actually 10 centimeters wider, too. So that gives you a, a more aggressive stance, better handling. Um, but the overall length of the vehicle is unchanged. So you're still going to have that uh, the handling dynamics in the city that our Smart customers are used to. 6.95 meters, so the, the tightest turning radius in the engine industry and something you, you can turn on a dime and it's it's getting great you know that urban driving where you need to move in and out of those tight spaces where you need to get at, in and out of the you know out of the way in a hurry um, the smart 4 2 will, uh, will definitely allow it well thanks to that automatic transmission this vehicle for me is finally an enjoyable car to drive remember you still got the five-speed manual. The vehicle is as long as the previous model, but inside it's about four inches wider, which gives you more room between driver and passenger. A couple of places to put your stuff. And in back, well, it's small, but we're quite surprised at how much stuff we can actually put in here. But you know, the question I'd like to ask Mercedes is, you do have a four-door smart car. Why not bring it to Canada? It's just something that it's just not right for the North American market. Uh, the, the business case just isn't there and the demand, quite frankly, isn't as well. The concept of the 4-2 for us in Canada still works that we, you know, the customers, we know, um, you know, where it's right and the, the, the customers will find it. And the 4-4 the, the just wasn't, uh, wasn't right for the North American market right now. I think we've proven the safety pedigree of the Smart over the years. We've done things like take a Smart and crash it headfirst into an S-Class just to show that, you know, it can be done, you know, in a way that the occupants of the vehicle would absolutely uh, walk away. We've proven that this concept works. So it's something that we've evolved over the years. We pioneered the idea of a car like the Smart. And now we've, we've really tried to perfect it. We've really tried to, again, learn from what our customers uh, tell us that they like, what they don't like, and, and build a better car for that. And that's part of the reason, again, why would we make a, a wider car? Um, you know, we don't want to compromise the convenience of the car, but we wanted something that gives you a better, uh, a more mature look, but then also better handling too. So there was a lot of, uh, a lot of decisions that went into uh, into designing the new Smart. So we began with some trash talk about the previous smart car, but I can tell you now this new vehicle is a huge improvement, especially with that new dual clutch transmission, which will be the big seller, which brings us to sales.
because Mercedes considers this a standalone vehicle, no real competitors. But hey, in reality, you've got a lot of small cars out there that bring a lot to the table, you know, like the Rio, the Yaris, and the Fit, and so on. Now, sales for the smart car, as I speak, are down steeply from last year's total of about 2,500. So I'm thinking with this new design, which I really like, a new transmission, which I like, I'm thinking Mercedes hopes that maybe this vehicle can go a little more mainstream, at least in the sales column.